Earth was born dry. It's hard to imagine now, when literally every living thing is made from water. But even though we started as just a scorched, lifeless rock, it turns out water on our planet was literally inevitable. And not just on Earth. Water is inevitable almost everywhere. For decades, scientists believed that it was an accident. Earth's water came from somewhere else. They believed it was accidentally delivered by icy comets and asteroids showering our planet. This theory is a bit weird, because it relies on random cosmic collisions. Somehow, asteroids and comets just happen to hit Earth in the right way at the right time and in the right amounts. But there's no way it could form right here in the solar system. Earth formed way too close to the sun to hold on to any water, right? Nope. Recently, this team of scientists from the Paris Observatory has proposed a new theory. They used data from the ALMA, a super powerful collection of 66 antennas that act like one. And they noticed something strange, a young star called HL Tauri. HL Tauri is essentially a newborn in stellar terms, being less than 100,000 years old. Plus, it's not very distant, situated just about 450 light years away from us. Astronomically speaking, that's akin to having a neighbor across town. And this star has water surrounding it. It's right inside its protoplanetary disk. The protoplanetary disk is like a giant pancake of gas, dust, and ice that forms around a young star right after it's born. The star is in the center of the system, like the egg yolk and the protoplanetary disk surrounds it like the egg white. And there it was, tons of water vapor. In fact, ALMA showed at least 3.7 times as much water vapor around this star as in all of Earth's oceans. And this wasn't the only discovery like that. They also studied a young star called V883 Orionis. This one is farther than HL Tauri, about 1,300 light years away. And there it was, too. Water vapor swirling in its protoplanetary disk. And then, in another system, called PDS-70. Makes you wonder just how many star systems with water are out there. And most importantly, how did it get there? Water should be delivered on planets by asteroids, but there were no signs of icy asteroids crashing into the dust. No wild impacts to explain it it seemed like the water was woven into the disk itself. This discovery changed everything. After deeper study, they finally realized how many planets end up with water on them, including our Earth. So, here's an updated story. Water was here long before Earth existed. In fact, it was here even before the Sun was born. It existed in a huge cloud of gas and dust called a molecular cloud. It's like space fog, filled with all kinds of particles. These clouds are nurseries for stars and planets. They're full of stuff that would eventually give birth to our sun. In some super chilly and crowded parts of these molecular clouds, the water existed in the form of teeny tiny ice crystals. These crystals were sticking to random dust particles. Gravity was doing its thing by pulling things to each other. It started sticking dust and rocks together like glue. These rocks already had frosty sprinkles on them. As the region was spinning faster and heating up, it eventually gave birth to our sun. This happened about 4.6 billion years ago, and the sun was surrounded with the protoplanetary disk we mentioned. Gas, rock, and some ice that coated all these things. All the stuff that would become the planets. Our Earth started forming there too. It's about 4.5 billion years old, just a little bit younger than the sun. At that time, it was still impossibly hot and dry because it hung out super close to our young star. After about 5 million years, the newborn sun was growing stronger and hotter. The gas and dust began to disperse, and with it, something else happened. The icy rocks in the protoplanetary disk started to heat up. Slowly, their frozen surfaces turned into steam, and now there were billions of these asteroids around the sun, all releasing vapor into space. All that created an enormous, invisible halo of steam stretching across the solar system. The Earth began to move through this mist of water, also drinking it as it went. 
It soaked up all that vapor like a sponge. It gathered in lowlands, filled up craters, and seeped into the ground. Tiny puddles turned into lakes, and those lakes grew into oceans. From these oceans, life emerged. Now it covers nearly 70% of the planet's surface. So, it wasn't luck at all. Water was written into Earth's story from the very beginning. But the most incredible part is that, of course, this wasn't just an Earth story. If this process happened here, then it could be happening on other planets as well. That means it repeated on Mars, on Venus, and could potentially happen on tons of other planets out there. And this explains so much. Mars used to hold water, perhaps entire oceans, millions of years ago. Venus was a green, Earth-like paradise before the Sun pierced through its atmosphere and turned it into a nightmare. And even if water is gone from these places, it still exists on various moons in our solar system, including ours. Well, not really water the way we know it. When Neil Armstrong and his crew landed, there weren't any puddles in sight. That's because on the moon, it's not in liquid form, and not even ice. Instead, it's hidden as individual H2O molecules, scattered everywhere, mixed with dust and rocks. We're actually planning to collect it, not as individual molecules, of course, but by heating it up and turning it into actual, drinkable water. And it also showed there might be more water deep underground on the moon, hidden in caves. Some of it is actually lakes. And who knows? Less radiation, more heat, actual water. Maybe we'll even find some microorganisms there one day. All that means we could actually build moon stations in the future. And not just on our moon, too. For a long time, Saturn's moon Enceladus was just a bright, icy dot in the night sky for us. We thought of it as a small, frozen world with the surface so reflective it outshone everything else in the solar system. It was beautiful, sure, but no one thought it was particularly special. That is, until Cassini decided to check it out. Instruments on Cassini detected that something was pushing against Saturn's magnetic field near Enceladus. That meant there was gas, maybe even an atmosphere, coming from the Moon. When Cassini took a closer look, they were shocked to see that Enceladus was brimming with activity. Cracks near the Moon's south pole, later nicknamed Tiger Stripes, were spewing huge jets of water vapor and ice particles into space. These geysers are like shot material hundreds of miles high. Where in the world was all this water coming from? Turns out, Beneath the ice, hidden under a shell of up to 25 miles thick, is a huge ocean. A salty, liquid sea covering the entire moon. We later discovered that there might be a similar underground ocean on Jupiter's moon, Europa. Water is a key ingredient for life as we know it, which is why scientists are always searching for it beyond our planet. Finding water around other stars means those places could potentially support life. Could something be alive down there on these moons? We don't know yet. But one day, a new spacecraft will return and maybe even land on these moons. Whatever it is that we'll find there, it will be a great discovery. Most importantly, these moons could be great for us to build space stations on in the future. So, this discovery doesn't just change our understanding of Earth's past. It opens a door to something much bigger. It means that water could be literally everywhere. Therefore, life can too. We just need to have some patience and find it. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.